Hello, everyone, and welcome to Rams Reveal, presented by NFL All Day. I'm your host, J.B. Long. Yes, it is Super Bowl week, but let's treat this as the first episode of a new season because we have the new offensive coordinator of your Los Angeles Rams with us, Mike LaFleur, our guest. Nice to meet you and to sit down with you. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. And welcome to Los Angeles. I understand you bring a wife and two children with you. Yeah, yeah, we got on the, uh, got on the plane on Friday. Um, they obviously are pretty excited to get back out to the West Coast and, and into the sunny weather. So they're out, they're out house hunting right now, school hunting, and uh, you know we'll send them back and try to figure this thing out. Tell us a quick word about them. Uh, they're awesome. They, I got a seven-year-old girl, um, Addison, and a five-year-old boy, Wes. Um, you know they, uh, they're cool. They, they, uh, Wes was born in California when we were up up north. You know so. Uh, uh, you know, he, he was, like I said, born here. Then Addison, she knows California well. Uh, again, they're awesome. Uh, my wife, uh, we've been together since we were 15. We were high school sweethearts. Uh, got married at a, at a young age, 22, 23, something like that. I hope she's not watching this yet. Um, but uh, no, they're, they're good. They're, they're my rock, like a lot of people say, but it's the truth and uh, excited to get them out here permanently. Not only wearing the colors, but referring to uh, that rival up north as up north. Should we keep it that way? We'll is that keep, what we'll, San Francisco we'll, is we'll, forevermore? We'll, yeah, we'll keep it up there. I got a lot of respect for obviously what they do up there, and, and, and you know a lot of people in those buildings. But uh, you know, I'm in this building now, and, and happy to be here. Likewise. Well, this is typically our player podcast, but during the off season, we use Rams Revealed to get to know some of the key figures in the organization, uh, of which you are certainly now one. Before we get into your future with the Rams, I believe this is the first time you've spoken publicly since New York. Correct me if I'm wrong yep, there, but yep. how would you like to close the book on your Jets tenure? Yeah, I mean it was um, it was a it was a really good two years personally. Uh, you know, there's there's a lot of people in that organization that are just great, great people, and uh, you know, I wouldn't I wouldn't trade those two years for anything. It was a great learning experience in a lot of different ways. Um, you know, went into a situation where it was. Um, you know, it was a young, young squad, and uh, they're going to continue to grow there, you know, and I wish them all the best. I have a lot of respect for Joe Douglas and, and Robert Sala, and, uh, you know, what they do there, as long as it's not against uh, the Rams, uh, you know, again, I hope they have success there. We know the connection to Sean McVay through your brother, Matt. And I think the first question is, are we going to impose any fines for calling you Matt LaFleur? It's going to happen. It's uh, it, it, Every building, whether it was the Jets building, the, the Niners, uh, and in, including when I see my mom and dad, I'm still called Matt probably about 33% of the time. He's the older one, so it just kind of slips out of their mouth. So uh, no fines. You know, I just kind of I just kind of roll with it. So no Any other LaFleur siblings in the no, coaching it's profession just, it's we just, need to know it's about? It's just okay. him and I, you know, so uh, we'll, we'll be good there. Because of that, I think it might be intuitive, but how'd this opportunity come to be and what about it appealed to you? Um, you know, I've, I've known Sean a long time, right? And, um, you know, just from, from his days back, uh, obviously in Washington uh, with Kyle, uh, with my brother, Matt, um, obviously Raheem and, and just so many connections there. Mike McDaniel's one of my best friends, obviously over in Miami. So I, again, I've known Sean for a long time. Uh, we always, kind of joked about you know maybe one day there'll be a time where we get to work with each other and it just it it just kind of aligned this way you know right after the season uh, we had some talks and uh, went through a process and and uh, you know here I am so I, I couldn't be happier um, you know obviously to be in this organization. You said it along the way there you've never worked with him specifically but it must feel like you have because of those other touch points. Yeah I mean it's uh, you know you're you're for lack of a better term, you're, you're in that same tree and in, in, in that same family of, uh, of guys and, and uh, schematically you all do a little bit something different, but again, it's it's all kind of from a similar foundation. So, um, you know, and we, we've always talked in the off season, just, you know, whether it be just what's going on, but also schematically as, as you're going through your cutups and trying to figure some stuff out, a lot of teams, not just, you know, us with the Jets or the night. We a lot of teams study the Rams for obvious reasons, uh, you know, so you'd have those kind of questions and stuff like that, you know, so it's, um, you know, it's, it's good not to uh, just have to call over the phone. Now we can directly do it one on one. I know he looks at Matt like a brother. In fact, as the story goes, it was late 2017 and an argument they had out here on the practice field spilled into the office. And at some point, Matt's, you know, wanting to be fired and Sean's <laughs> threatening to quit and on and on they go. They end up winning. Uh, the division that year right. and having a nice run but are you sure you want in on all that oh yeah yeah no it's uh 
and, and it probably won't be the last time of something like that, right? I mean, it's it's it was two competitive guys. I wasn't there obviously in seventeen. I've uh, you know you hear the stories and stuff like that, but they're they're best friends, you know, and they um, uh, they they did a lot of good stuff there in seventeen. And it's only continued on in this organization with Sean and whoever's been uh, working with him and, and and these great players, you know. So uh, uh, there were similar situations that happened uh, up north when you know I was up there for the four years, and again that's just that's just. Uh, a lot of competitive guys in in you know in a room for a six seven month period in the, in those long seasons and, and sometimes those things can happen but you work it out you know it's it's all for the right reasons. You are younger than Sean. You're one of the few who has that claim to fame, right? <laughs> yeah. Thirty six next uh, month. Uh, Thirty six next month. Yep. March birthday. Yeah, I appreciate it. <laughs> good for you. Uh, how about in terms of logistics? Sean's still going to call plays. Yes. Yes. And you're good with that. Yeah. Yeah. No. It's uh, again. It was um, when I when I thought about kind of what I wanted next right after uh, after the Jets there was you know uh, there was a, a list that that I professionally did in my head and, and uh, this one checked all the boxes immediately so you know that's uh, that's something that uh, you know I learned a lot you know through a, over the last two years I look forward to doing it again but right now just going into this next season it's it's about winning football games. Should it be upstairs, eyes in the sky? You know we, we're, we're working through those things right now mm -hmm. um, you know and uh, you know we'll figure all that out. The story of January here in Los Angeles for the Rams was very much about Sean being burnt out and would he or wouldn't he come back for another go round. I'm curious as you step into this environment, how you feel like you can help rejuvenate him and help him maintain his bandwidth for the season ahead. Yeah, you know, I th that's a question uh, for him in terms of the burnout and stuff like that. You know, I. I know what kind of competitor Sean is, you know, and uh, I know what he wants for this organization and these players. And, uh, you know, he, um, he's, he's won every step of the way. And there, this was a little speed bump. But in, in a lot of ways, I know, again, you'll have to ask him, but I know from people from afar and now being in this building, it's only going to be a, um, a positive thing moving forward, you know. So, um, you know, all I can do is come in and, and, and you know, step into an organization that's won a lot of football games over you know uh, six years and uh, and do my part and, and make sure that the 2023 season is, is the best that we can make it. So to that point I think some on the outside saw what was coming for the Rams and thought hey this might be a time where the franchise needs to rebuild. General Manager Les Snead rephrased it as remodeling. In the interviewing process with Sean at any point are you curious hey what am I stepping into here? What are we trying to accomplish specifically in the year ahead in 2023? Yeah, you, you have some of those questions, but but again, that wasn't uh, that wasn't a big deal to me. It was you know getting into an organization that wants to win and knows how to win, and getting with the right people and good people, and uh, not just Sean, but so many guys on this staff. You know, not, not that I've worked with Yarbs or Zach Robinson or some other guys, Thomas Brown. Uh, I've worked with Raheem. Um, there's just a lot, a lot of good people in this organization. And it dates back to even 17 when, when Matt would talk about Les and, and, and Kevin. And, uh, you know, so um, again, it, it no matter what the roster was going to be, and, and there's always going to be changes in a roster, no matter uh, what kind of season it's going to be, um, wasn't a big deal. I, I know that, again, we're with the right people that well, we're going to make this thing work. You've dug in a fair bit in terms of film study on who the Rams were last season, I imagine? Yeah, I mean, you, you always do just from a, from, a, you always, again, you, you. I'd always watch the Rams. You know, you peek them on a Monday, then you always have some sort of crossover. Uh, we played Seattle late in the year. I know they played, uh, or the Rams played Seattle late in the year, so you got that crossover. So you get a you get a feel kind of where they're at, and uh, you know what's going on with the roster. There was, I'd say, there's uh, there was a lot of similar situations that was happening in, in my old place in New York that was happening here. There's there was injuries upon injuries, and you know there can be a lot of growth there too, not just from a coaching standpoint, but a player standpoint. A lot of guys got to get a lot of meaningful snaps uh, that's going to suit us well you know moving forward mm -hmm. all right so this next kind of sequence of questions is definitely for the benefit of the uh, 14 opponents on your schedule next year who probably right. want to know what the week one game plan is going to look <laughs> like but here, here's where i'm going with this the rams offense starting with your brother in, in 17 and through really 2020 pre-snap motion zone blocking lot play action then matthew stafford arrives and for 21 and, and the first part of last year leading the league in empty formation, kind of full field reads. Then returned to its roots under Baker Mayfield uh, and had some great success in the running game with Cam Akers and others down the stretch of this past year. So where I'm going with that is where do you think the Rams are going to land on the 23 spectrum, given your tree that you talked about, your influences, your coaching philosophy? Um, where do you aim 
for the year ahead. Well, you know, the, the the goal is to score points and win football games, right? And that's what we're going to sit here and, and uh, particularly when we get into it next week, we're still working on some uh, some staff stuff right now. Um, and then when we get really diving into it next week uh, with the roster, with what our guys can do, with what we need to add uh, and, and, and build, you know, from a roster standpoint, and then schematically put this thing together. For six years, uh, you know this this offense has worked here, and, and and Sean has evolved like a lot of like all great coaches do. You know, every single year, and try to try to stay ahead of the curve, and that's what we're going to do. We're not going to just obviously look at our roster, what what you know uh, we did in San Francisco or New York, and then in L.A. Uh, what is the 2023 Rams going to look like? And we got a great idea, uh, but we're going to put our heads together. And it's going to be a lot of work, and it's going to be uh, it's going to be fun putting this thing together. And like, ultimately, there's a long way to go in terms of the personnel that can make that go for sure. Sunday. Yeah, I mean, that's, you know, all these schemes are great and all, but uh, it's obviously uh, the best schemes have a lot of times the best players, right? Uh, But also understanding how to utilize those players and and what their strengths are in in building all 11. I like to, you know, it's it's like a basketball team. There's not five point guards out there usually, right? You're building this thing the right way. And it's the same thing, particularly when you're talking the skill positions. There's there's unique skill sets amongst all these guys, making it fit, making it work within a a system so that there's a lot of uh, uh, variation within, within that group. I was thinking this morning about how much the complexion of the division has changed since you were in the West sure. last. New regime in Arizona, new defensive coordinator in Seattle, and soon to be one in San Francisco as well. So that has to factor into your offseason calculus. I yeah, think. yeah. I mean, you get uh, it's it's wild when you think back. You know, we, um, I got to San Francisco in '17 when when obviously Sean and and you know the the, the deal started here, and it was. Uh, in 17 it was considered the the worst division in 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 football at that time you know when we got there uh, new staff here in LA new staff in uh, San Francisco uh, Seattle was kind of running the deal Arizona was going through their little deal and quickly that thing flipped uh, obviously starting with the Rams um, you know so uh, and then you kind of got used to that division and then I left the division to all the way across the country into a totally different division with totally different philosophies in New England, uh, Miami, and Buffalo. You know, so uh, it'll be unique. Um, again, there's going to be a lot of change, just like there is every year, not just within a division, but uh, you know, each conference. So, um, you know, again, that'll be that'll be part of it in terms of how we're building this thing. Uh, you know, obviously, to to get to where you want to get to, you want to uh, win the division first. The one thing here we're looking forward to in Los Angeles is a healthy offseason for Matthew Stafford and that continuity continuing to build at the quarterback position. What relationship, if any, do you have with him so far and how will you build upon it this offseason? Yeah, no, that's that's about as big as anything is, is building these relationships with these players and making them genuine, right? And, and understanding that, uh, you know, we're all just one piece of the puzzle, you know. I'm trying to give as much as I can to these guys to for them to understand that all I want them to do is have as much success uh, personally, but obviously uh, for their organization, you know. So, um, uh, you know, Sean and and, and uh, reached out uh, uh, with myself and, and Coop and, and Stafford on a text, um, you know, and I look forward to kind of as, as we settle I just got in feels like 72 hours ago uh, kind of get our feet settled a little bit I uh, got my family here gonna send them back to Jersey because the kids got to go back to school for a little right. bit obviously and, and, and get back into a normal routine and then really hit the ground running getting to, to know not just Matthew and and, and Coop and all but but all these guys I want to reach out to all these guys and uh, like I said uh, get to know them Happy birthday, QB1, by the way, as we sit down That's on, I heard his, that, on yeah. his birthday. Uh, lastly, it is Super Bowl week. Do you have a Super Bowl pick for us? Ah, Chiefs no, and I, Eagles. I stay out of those ones. Uh, you know, it's going to be a good game, though. You know, I've, I've gotten to know a lot of those guys on the Philly staff, uh, what a tremendous year they had. And then, uh, you know, that, that quarterback in Kansas City is pretty good, too. You know, so uh, it'll be fun. Uh, we'll see. Um, Get to go down to Newport for a few days with the family, and then uh, get back up here watch the Super Bowl. Then, you know, the 2023 season hits off on on Monday officially. You know, so it'll be uh, it'll be fun to get rolling. Colors look good on you, Mike. I appreciate it. <laughs> good to meet you. Thank you for some of your time as you settle in here to Los Angeles. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me. All right, for Mike Lafleur, the new offensive coordinator of your Los Angeles Rams. I'm JB Long. This is Rams Reveal.